Today I'm going to be testing this DC house 12.8 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So I've had these batteries for a little bit, maybe six months or so, and I've never really capacity test them. We put them right into the RV and was using them to run our residential refrigerator that's in the RV. It has an inverter and 110 volt inverter and then these batteries. So anyways, I want to make sure that these actually are getting 100 amp hours from their ratings. So I'm going to put them on this inverter here. This is a 4000 watt inverter and I have a small air conditioner connected that uses more power than our residential refrigerator. What I have here is a battery monitor that's monitoring the battery and then this is the remote to the inverter that's going to be monitoring the inverter. The air conditioner is moved away a little bit but it is a 8000 BTU portable air conditioner that I have to the side here that is just going to be here to put a load on this battery. So anyways, let's go ahead and put this battery to the test and make sure that I'm getting what I paid for. All right, to start this test, I'm going to go ahead and turn the inverter on. And the air conditioner kicked off on its own because I already had it turned on. And, you know, basically when you turn the inverter off, it just shut off the air conditioner. When the fan's running, it runs at about 40 to 50 watts. On here it's showing 72, on here it's showing 50, a little bit of overhead. But this is really what I'm going to be watching. I'm not really worried about the inverter. I know it can handle it. I'm going to be watching this battery monitor to find out exactly what's happening in this battery. Pretty soon, this thing is going to kick up to, I don't know, five, 600 watts, which is basically what the little AC unit uses to run. Of course, there's going to be a little spike when it starts up. A lot of times I have a hard time catching that spike, but I've seen it and it, it gets into the kilowatts. All right, it took about a minute or so for the compressor to kick on, but now it is running around 600, 650 watts. So I'm going to go ahead and let this run. Usually I'm alerted by the inverter beeping, but you know, I'm going to check on it just to make sure, you know, as we get close, usually once I start hearing the inverter beeping, I've maybe got 10, 15 seconds before the whole thing shuts off. Either the BMS or the remote will turn off and everything will go blank. But anyways, I'm going to let this go ahead and run and come back when we're closer to the end so we can see just how well this battery's performing. Two hours later. All right, so we're starting to get down to the wire here. We've got 11 volts. Right now we're at 96.7 amp hours. And this inverter is saying 10.9 volts. But we're pretty close to the point where one of these is probably going to give out. Now, right now we are running only at about 72 watts. The compressor is obviously not running right now. And it's just the fan. I'm assuming if that compressor kicks on anytime after this point it will probably be the end of the test but since it's just the fan that's not a huge draw and it's keeping the voltage up a little bit so now would be a great time to subscribe to the channel I'm gonna be doing a lot of testing on solar I'm also going to be testing out inverters solar panels different things like that stuff that we're going to use for our off-grid cabin in Colorado and also to make us more off-grid at our property on the ranch we have a lot of rv work that we're going to be doing with solar and batteries all right just heard the compressor kick on it's already nice and cold in this room yeah exactly what i expected the extra load from that compressor kicking on pulled the voltage down which pulled it down here and we're going to see how much we're going to finally get out of this battery that was it so this dropped under 10.5 so the inverter itself dropped out the bms is still running of course because this right here is on stop that beeping so the bms did not kick off because it didn't drop below 10 volts i believe it's going to cut out at around 10 volts uh, but the inverter did sense less than 10.5 volts so it dropped out so in general this is what i would consider it's you know maximum capacity and we hit 97.4 amp hours there is going to be some fluctuation in charging and things like that i could turn around and charge these up and, and maybe get 100 amp hours out of it it also comes down to the amount of load you're putting on here if i was doing this test and i didn't do anything more than maybe 10 amps against this battery where well, you're going to get a better amp hour rating out of it because you pulled it out slower but the bigger the load you put on it the more realistic maybe that's going to be for your situation but 
but the higher the load is going to actually affect your amp hours also. One of the reasons I like to use the air conditioner is because it gives me a little better real world scenario. For me, I want to know what kind of load I would normally get, let's say from the RV or if I run an air conditioner or something like that off of this. So that's still pretty good. I still think that, you know, 97.4 is, is fine. That's fair. And, you know, these aren't brand new batteries. These were used for maybe six months. If I would have ran this thing at 100 amps the whole time continuously, this probably would have been lower. If this battery is 100 amps continuous, I'm probably going to set it up in a scenario where I'm probably going to average around 50. But anyways, this is the test results for, you know, an average 50 to 60 amp draw. I think it did pretty good. And yeah, I would give this battery a thumbs up. This used to be one of the cheapest batteries for these specs that you could get on Amazon. Now, since then, there have been other batteries come out that are cheaper than this one. And the price on this one has actually went up a little bit. But, you know, it's still on the low end, you know, 200 ish per battery. So it's not the cheapest, but it's definitely still on the cheap end. All right, well, I hope this video was helpful. Remember, hit that subscribe button, mash that like button. Thank you very much for watching. Y'all take care.